First, gently pipette mix your cell or nuclei suspension 10 times with a wide bore P200 pipette tip. The cell or nuclei suspension should be freshly mixed before transferring into the pips to prevent settling from impacting your sample loading. Next, add 8 microliters of your freshly mixed sample, plus 40 units of RNAs inhibitor directly into the pips, not just on the surface of the pips. If performing multiple reactions, add cells to all PIP tubes before proceeding to the next step. Mix the cell PIP mixture 10 times using a standard bore low retention P200 pipette tip. It is important to pipette mix slowly to the first stop only to avoid creating foam or excessive bubbles. Next, add 1000 microliters of partitioning reagent down the sidewall of the PIP tube. Tightly cap tubes and place in the rotating vortex adapter in the horizontal configuration. Ensure the tubes are fully inserted into the adapter. Samples will be vortex for 15 seconds in the horizontal configuration, followed by two minutes in the vertical configuration at 3000 RPM. For an easier transition between vortexing steps, we recommend starting the timer at two minutes and stopping the vortexer with one minute and 45 seconds remaining, or after 15 seconds of vortexing horizontally. Rotate the vortex head into the vertical configuration and hit the start button to vortex vertically for two minutes. At the end of this step, we have generated our emulsion and captured our cells or nuclei. Now we need to remove the excess partitioning reagent from the bottom of the tube so there is room to add the lysis buffer. After the emulsion has stabilized post vortexing, use a 1 mil syringe and blunt bottom needle to aspirate out the excess partitioning reagent until the interface meniscus is resting at the 4 or L line marker of the blue tube rack. Aliquot 210 microliters of the CLB3 into the 1.5 mil tubes for each sample being processed. For the remaining chemical lysis steps, we recommend processing one sample at a time. Add 630 microliters a partitioning reagent down the sidewall of one 1.5 mil tube containing CLB3. Next, vortex the tube for 10 seconds at max speed on a standard benchtop vortexer to generate the chemical lysis emulsion. Immediately transfer the entire chemical lysis emulsion into the PIP tube before closing the tube and inverting 10 times. Then, proceed with the next sample by adding partitioning reagent and repeating these same steps. Verify the PIP seek dry bath is preheated to the appropriate temperature for your sample type. Then, insert the samples into the dry bath and select skip and yes to begin lysis incubation. Please refer to the user guide for cell and nuclei lysis temperature profiles for this step. After incubation is complete, this is the first stopping step of the workflow. Samples are stable at 20 degrees Celsius for up to 96 hours. After preparing all the mRNA isolation reagents as detailed in the user guide, place the PIP tubes in the blue 1.5 mil stand and use a 1 mil syringe and a blunt bottom needle to aspirate out the excess partitioning reagent from the bottom phase until the top meniscus of the emulsion is level with the number 2 or M marker on the blue tube rack. When processing multiple samples, Label the syringe and save it for the next waste removal step. Next, we will add 750 microliters of breaking buffer down the sidewall, followed by an additional 200 microliters of the pink departitioning reagent added in the same fashion. We will then invert the sample 10 times to break our emulsions. After spinning down your samples in a benchtop minifuge for 5 to 10 seconds, Obtain the 1 mil syringe used previously to aspirate all the bottom pink waste phase. Spin the samples down for another 5 to 10 seconds. Then use good lighting to double check for any remaining pink waste at the bottom of the tube. Be sure to carefully aspirate out any remaining pink waste with a P20 pipette or the save syringe using small circular motions. 
it is critical to remove all the pink waste, as it can inhibit reverse transcription if not fully removed. Once you've removed all the pink waste, your samples can be placed on ice and you can move on to the washing section of the user guide. With a P1000 low retention tip, slowly aspirate the pips from the 1.5 mil sample tube and transfer that volume into one of the 1x wash buffer aliquots in the 15 mil tubes. Briefly centrifuge the remaining volume in the 1.5 mil sample tube on a benchtop micro centrifuge to bring the liquid down to the bottom of the tube. Then, perform a second transfer of any remaining pips into the same wash buffer aliquot. Be sure that no pips are left behind in the sample tube or pipette tip. If droplets remain in the pipette tip, flush them out by aspirating up and down in the wash buffer aliquot at least three times. Gently mix each tube by tapping the bottom to disperse the pellet and invert 10 times. Load the 15 mil tubes into a swinging bucket rotor centrifuge and spin for two minutes at 750 XG. Be sure to have braking set for 70 to 80% of maximum to avoid disruption of the pips pellet. Remove supernatant until approximately one mil of washing buffer remains. Do not disturb the packed pips at the bottom of the tube. Add 12 mil more of 1x wash buffer and repeat these steps to perform three total washes before moving on to volume regulation. After transferring the third and final wash in the 1.5 mil tubes and spinning down in a benchtop micro centrifuge, check each sample's pips pellets and record any bead loss. To convert milligrams weighed into microliters of sample within the tube, record total mass and empty tube mass. Then subtract empty tube mass from total mass to find the PIP solution volume in milligrams, and convert milligrams to microliters on the assumption that one milligram equals one microliter. Then subtract 250 microliters from the PIP solution volume to calculate the wash buffer to remove. Spin down the sample on a benchtop micro centrifuge to pellet the pips before removing the calculated volume. Next, aspirate the calculated wash buffer to remove to leave 250 microliters desired remaining sample volume while being careful not to aspirate pips. This is critical to ensure proper volume regulation of the sample for mixing with the RT master mix. Users can now proceed to reverse transcription.